Timmy Joe reviews anything. Reviewing computer parts on YouTube. That's Woo! You gotta be pumped on that, right? Well, computer parts! Woo! Oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah! Boom! I'm back, Billy, and I want you! I'm not gonna play. Why not that guy? Because I already had him. That's right, kids, I already had him. Anyways, what's up guys? Timmy Joe, make videos about computers on the internet and you already know by the title. You already know because you've seen this me play with this motherboard before and set up a little bit. Uh, we're, we're playing Rise of the Tomb Raider here, uh, just to kind of prove a point on... ba 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 Socket 775. And you know what? When you think of Socket 775, you usually think of this little bad boy a Q6600 and there are definitely limitations to this CPU but I've been told in the comments several times that you know the uh, quad cores from the you know 10 years ago the uh, crazy oh she's climbing the mountain the uh, quad cores from the socket 775 generation the core 2 quads they're obsolete they're no good for gaming I've sold a few in a gaming system from time to time but I wanted to see like if you really push it to the limit what the you know this kind of setup can do and I have pretty much an optimal situation here I have a QX 9560 running here okay and it's overclocked oh my freaking goodness <sighs> to 4.5 gigahertz 4.51 gigahertz that's insane the base clock on this is 3 gigahertz and I'm running at you know basically almost twice well 1.5 gigahertz faster and she's doing a, a pretty good job here I'll uh, reset the 1% uh, lows here and uh, you know we see an average on high with an RX 580 which is what I have here actually with the accelero mod on it uh, you know we're getting 71 69 frames a second the 1% lows 44 up here with the snowy mountaintop you know she's running good and uh, I gotta stress this again 4.5 gigahertz on a you know core 2 quad running uh you know with an air cooler i mean it's a beefy air cooler to boot here but it's you know doing well it's uh it's not doing too bad at all i have some kind of you know this isn't going to be a completely uh oh she's falling e grab 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 this isn't going to be a full out gaming benchmark uh if, you know video because number one i don't have the time oh no she's falling but you know 73 54 and 24 you know pretty good 1% lows here and uh, I would make this a full out gaming benchmark video but the results here aren't going to be easily replicatable okay we're gonna get out of the game quit the game there we go the uh, thing is yeah I'm running Windows 7 there's a, there's a reason the RGB probably helps too on this uh, uh, Gambia's 650 watt power supply but I have uh, the fans maxed. I have the Raven cooler, which is kind of like a Noctua NH uh, D14. And it's got the dual Chromax uh, 140 mils on it. I even got this little guy right down here. And then I put the Accelero mod on the RX 580. But this is a pretty unique setup because this is a motherboard that is uh, socket 775, but it supports DDR3 memory. And I have uh, 8 gigs of Corsair Vengeance in here, and it's running at about 1,350. We'll check that out here in CPU-Z. Uh, so, you know, I, it's rated for 1,600, but I have a hard time getting it that high. Uh, you know, th this platform is meant to run with a much lower, you know, frequency on the memory. And with this insane overclock of 4.5 gigahertz I have on here, I can understand why the memory isn't, you know, doing, you know, it, it top dollar, top shelf. But I have it at like 1370, I think, uh, effective with uh, the dual channel running. So she's got, you know, some pretty insane speeds on the DDR3 when this is usually a DDR2 platform. And uh, I have one of the best, if not the best, um, CPUs for this. You know, it's a, an extreme edition, so it would have been a very expensive processor at the time uh, of launch, uh, you know, 10 years ago. This is before hyper-threading. Well, there was hyper-threading, but it hadn't made its way into the mainstream, you know. Uh, but uh, Core i7s and the, the i7 platform, the Core series, uh, was just around the corner. And this was pretty much its last dying breath, this uh, here platform uh, DDR3 memory uh, you know real pretty decent motherboard from ASUS it's the uh, P5Q3 Deluxe 
not really a gaming motherboard, but it has all of the... Uh, I'll, I'll go into the overclocking settings in just a moment, so calm your nerves there, Billy. But, uh, yeah, there's that, and then it uh, has a really good VRM, crazy VRM heatsink. It's got, you know, the buttons on the motherboard to turn it, you know. It's got lots of cool functions. I really like this motherboard, actually. It's even got that Asus Express gate. I did a whole video on that. But you want to see what kind of Cinebench I'm getting, probably, eh, right? And, I, I, you know, I could put a water cooler on this. Like, this is getting pretty toasty at its uh, max temperatures. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll check that once uh, I run through a, one Cinebench here. But... Um, if I put water on it, I don't think I'm going to get much further. This is a really good air cooler. And unless I put my crazy, you know, ice buckets challenge set up on it, I really don't think we're going to see much better performance. So we'll run uh, Cinebench and I'll cross my fingers that it doesn't crash. And then uh, what I'll do is uh, I'll grab this camera here. And I'm going to show you while it's running Cinebench. Just one second. It's pulling... 400 watts from the wall, 410, 412, eh, that's pretty crazy. So, she's certainly not power efficient at these kinds of gigahertz, but uh, yeah, not bad, not bad. I was hoping to hit 500 in Cinebench, and spoiler alert, it doesn't, it doesn't happen. Um, it's, it's pretty close though, actually, I'll show you while this is running, because it takes forever, if we bring up uh, my web browser here, boof! Um, hardware, yeah, hardware bot, uh, this particular processor, we'll see here, it, it um, it's 9650, there we go, Nine, yeah, maybe I meant, said the wrong processor name earlier, the highest Cinebench score is 612, and then in the top 5, you know, top, let's see here, 10, there's a few 500s, but, uh, number 12 is a lower score than I'm going to get here, assuming it doesn't crash out. We're close. We're close to the edge. But uh, she's fairly stable. I, I, I've reached a point, you know, a teetering point where uh, the volts are very, very high. I'll even go into the, uh, the BIOS and show you my settings that I got. 488. And I tried everything, even like killing Windows services and doing different things to get the, the 500. The close I think I got was uh, I got a 490 once. So, you know, that's pretty cool. You probably want to see a uh, fire strike result. So good thing I closed all of my fire striking stuff. We'll launch fire strike and then that way we can compare some fire strike scores. Because I'm actually pretty impressed with the results I was getting with this. Uh, you know, this is such an aging platform. But you could akin it to a very first generation like Ivy Bridge, uh, you know, Sandy Bridge, Core i5 stock, we'll say. Uh, at this crazy overclock, but you know when you dial it back, it's only as good as like a first generation i5, you know, IPC wise. If that, yeah. So, pretty impressed with this platform. Unfortunately, it's you know pretty antiquated, and you're not going to run into this particular situation. And if you did, you'd probably be paying a lot of money to get this motherboard, the DDR3 memory. And the QX, uh, you know, 9650, in order to get, you know, this, and then you need a really good CPU cooler, a really good case airflow, and then, you know, by the time you get all that done, why didn't you just go and buy, you know, uh, a quad core Ryzen, you know, 2200G, or uh, you know, Ryzen 1300 in the first place? Exactly. What I'll do is I'll show you some some scores and some things. So. We see here, uh, I wanted to show that later, but I was just watching a video on some people overclocking this processor. The volts get extremely high. This guy's using like 1.65 volts. I'm at 1.6 right now. That's that's pretty ridiculous. I, I, I don't even understand it. But, uh, you know, uh, the RX 582, I did the Accelero mod here. I was hoping to get, you know, uh, the, the max out of this because it had that stupid arrow cooler from msi on it before if you check this combat crate video i complain a lot about the cooler on that rx 580 but uh unbeknownst to me i can only get like 1450 overclock with this uh particular setup with the accelero on it and uh with a msi twin frozer edition uh, I was only getting 1466, so this Accelero mod actually does make the temperatures much better, and uh, it makes it work out. So how's our fire strike? Oh, we're on physics score, so we still have a minute here to talk. There we go. Tomb Raider, we see here we got an average on high of 92 FPS, 
with the um, uh, this and the combat crate. So the AMD Ryzen 1600 with six cores, 12 threads. And the Tomb Raider, uh, you know, was getting 92 FPS uh, with that really good modern CPU. We were seeing about a 60 FPS average, maybe a little bit higher. So there is a bottleneck with a better processor with Tomb Raider. You were going to get much better frame rates. But Iceman will be forgotten. Loading up the result. We're going to break 10,000, you think? Boof! We broke... That's a really good score. That's a really good score. The physics score on this, 7,600. That's impossibly fast. That's... It almost doesn't make sense. I think that there's a lot of, you know... The Fire Strike is really putting some, I would say, unrealistic numbers up there for how good this CPU is. And then uh, we go down the line here. This is the combat crate. We see it did a little bit better. 1600 on the graphics score. Uh, it was able to do with the better Ryzen processor. And that's getting almost 16,000 uh, physics score. So, you know, th this setup is about 9,000 points less than the Ryzen. Which, you know, makes sense. Much newer CPU, a lot more cores, a lot more threads. But moving down the line here, here's a Core i5-7400 that I tested with a GTX 1080. Okay, this is, I just go through my Firestrike results. And we see here that it's getting a physics score of 7300 at probably 3 gigahertz. So this setup, as it is, is as good as a stock Core i5-7300. Or what? 7400 there we go um that does that make any sense like i guess so and are you going to be able to match these results all the time no you need this very good motherboard you need the very good cpu cooler you're going to get a vrm that's really hot so you're going to need to put a little fan on it kind of doesn't make sense but uh you know if you underclocked this a bit to like 4.2 gigahertz they're almost on par with a core i5 7400 that's that's pretty crazy this is a pretty relevant platform still it's fairly interesting so you want to see probably lastly what the uh overclocking options are uh on here let's check that out so buff there we go i'll go ahead this is a really loud computer my goodness i'll uh restart the the computer and if you want to here let's just check before i do that if it'll well no i was gonna check temperatures i'm, I'm telling you it gets anywhere like in Cinebench, close to 100 degrees with this particular setup at 1.6 volts. It was getting very, very toasty. So, yeah, we got a beep, and we're going to get an uh, Asus Express gate, and I'm going to tap delete, and we're going to get a CPU overvoltage notification. But 4.53 gigahertz on a, uh, you know, quad-core extreme, uh, that's pretty, pretty awesome. CPU overvoltage, yeah, I know. I'm running more than 1.6 volts. So here's my overclocking settings in case you happen to have this exact setup and you want to do some extreme overclocking or you could dial it back considerably but still get like 4.2 gigahertz. And, uh, you know, if you dial back some of these settings, you could actually game with this thing in modern days as long as you had this motherboard with the DDR3 memory. So uh, we've got a manual not done. I didn't do XMP. I had a really hard time with XMP on the extreme memory profile, whatever, on this ASUS motherboard. It, like, never worked to load a memory profile that worked. But uh, we go manual overclocking and 11 uh, on the multiplier. It's stock at 9. So I'm not multiplier overclocking on this i'm doing a little bit of multiplier overclocking and then i upped this uh i think defaults to 300 or something like that i'm up to 410 on the um front side bus frequency okay and then uh i set the ddr frequency manually to uh 1367 so this is 1600 megahertz memory but Anytime I put it anywhere near there while I was overclocking, it would not boot. It would get a memory error. So 1367, that's pretty high for a quad, for sure. So um, all these other settings I left to auto, but we're down here. We're at 1.60625 volts. That's insane. It makes me feel dirty because in modern times, you're not going over like 1.5 volts on a CPU. You know, this is... Pretty high voltage, and as we saw, four, over 400 watts from the wall during Cinebench. And then uh, my memory, is uh, it's 1.5 volts. I have it at 1.56 volts for that 
Uh, it just seemed to be more stable when I did that. Uh, I, I should actually be at 1.5. I don't know why it wouldn't be stable at 1.5. So um, there's not much else to it. Let me go down to hardware monitor here. I have the PWM and like the uh, Asus, um, you know, uh, smart fan system or whatever off because it's just blowing full bore on the fans and that's what I wanted. Um, and we see here, even at idle, we're at 50 degrees on the CPU package and it gets north of 80, 90 degrees when you uh, run Cinebench. So that's pretty crazy. Uh, you know, other things, you know, not much else in here to show you. So yeah, that's my settings. So yeah, exit sure. Anyways, so I'm Matt, watch Jimmy Joe Instagram and Twitter. Uh, I know this wasn't a full out like review of the best of the best in all the games and everything like that. But I think the point is kind of moot because to get this exact setup, is going to cost you some money on eBay, and unless you fall into all these parts, like in a quad extreme edition and a motherboard that supports DDR3, there's it's not going to be worth it for you to seek this stuff out. Because as far as I can tell, to get a good motherboard, I was looking for one of these for a long time. I actually want to thank, yeah, over voltage protection. Shut up! Uh, I want to thank. Uh, I had a viewer send me this stuff, and uh, it just such a nice. You know, I got such nice viewers to send me stuff to just overclock the crap out of things. Well, uh, you know, this motherboard would have cost me 150 bucks because they're just, they're rare now. It's hard to find working examples of, you know, because they were only produced for like maybe a year before the Core i7s came out, like the Core series. So, uh, you know, this was kind of just a band-aid or a patch to make some things a little bit more relevant. But you can see we're pretty stable at 4.5 gigahertz, at least with the fan running full tilt. You know, a little VRM heatsink fan going. Uh, I'll just show you the, you know, before we go, real quick, uh, what the temperatures look like in Cinebench when you're you're running them at this high rate of ridiculousness. I encourage you to do all the YouTube stuff. You know, hit the subscribe button and like the video and all that stuff. You guys do it on your own anyway, so I don't really have to beg too too much for it. But I do have a Patreon, and uh, there's going to be a little announcement in the next couple of days so stick around for that but any help you guys can give me on patreon that's gonna just super help the channel it's gonna super help things go on forward if you have some cool old hardware like a socket 775 motherboard that runs ddr3 memory that you want to send along to me so i can overclock the bejesus out of it go ahead and do that but we see here we're at 90 degrees on some cores here 93 degrees that's that's getting up there it's too damn hot put this in a case it'll cook probably cook right now but uh yeah she's running stably running cinebench even north of 90 degrees yeah core 2 quad q6600 ddr2 memory antiquated really there's very little place for it unless you really are on a budget maybe you could put a 750ti on it play a few esports titles play a few games but if you want to play modern titles like rise of the tomb raider see we're getting a lot lower of a uh, score there with hardware monitor open for almost 450 uh then you know this whole setup here is probably not what you're looking for you're looking for a newer core i5 it's going to be a lot more energy efficient uh you're going to be able to run a stock cooler on it and uh you know get the same kind of results as this and you could run some you know green pcb memory in it and away you go this is some high-end corsair vengeance but i'm out watching me joe instagram and twitter stay tuned this week we're gonna have some super fun videos i'm i'm gonna go i'm gonna get this off my desk i'm glad we, we finished it off uh it's been sitting up there uh you know waiting for me to just do some final testing on it but now i've got a pretty sweet second 775 motherboard that i can do you know any sort of testing i need and i want to thank the viewers out there for always sending me cool donations like this you guys are treats i'll see you guys later boom timmy joe out this is a chooky beat production, production. production.